Choosing the right colors for your colored pencil drawing can seem really daunting, but I promise it's not really as hard as you think it is. And as long as you follow a few things I'm going to mention in this video, you won't ruin your drawings by choosing the wrong colors. I'm going to show you the exact best steps to end up choosing the right colors for a drawing and showing you how you can set yourself up for success in getting the right color for any drawing. I'll also share the number one handy tool you can use to help choose colors for your drawings as well, which will be especially handy in your journey learning about color choice and for those of you who are colorblind. So how could choosing colors on the fly possibly be as easy as I say it is? Well, it does take practice to get good at it. That's the hard part, but I'm going to show you the best way to practice. But before we get to that, the first step you are going to want to do is to set yourself up for good color choice success. And that is to limit the number of colored pencils that you are using. If you are using one of those big sets of 75 or over 100 or more colored pencils, you don't need that many. And in fact, that's just going to make things so much more confusing for you in learning to get familiar with colors. Ideally, you want to have a set that has between 24 to 60 colors, and that's all you need. What this is going to do for you is allow you to become familiar with all of the colors in your set, and you're going to have a much easier time choosing colors in the future because you don't have to look at the names, unless you're colorblind, and you'll know roughly how that color is going to influence any other colors that you mix with it. Now, in the set of colored pencils that you have, have, you do want to make sure that you at least have a good selection of different colored browns. If your set only has one brown color, then I do recommend purchasing other individual browns to accommodate your set. But what you do want is a brown for each color type. So one brown that is a red color and one brown that is a yellow color and preferably a brown that is going to be kind of dark but not super, super dark. A walnut brown is going to work best. The other thing that is important to have with your set is to have one light shade of every color and one dark shade of every color. So every yellow, you want a light shade and dark shade, green, blues, purples, etc., and also pink or fleshy colors. Having one of each is going to make it much easier for you in achieving those highlighted colors of that particular color group, as well as the more shadow colors of that particular color group. The next tip that I have for you in helping you choose the right colors with your drawings is making sure you have your colors organized a lot like a rainbow. I preferably like having mine organized in the drawer underneath my drafting table so that they are really easy to find exactly what I'm looking for and I can see every single color laid out. Now, the important thing about having your colors laid out like this is to have them set up in order as they are changing from one color to the next. So if we start, for example, in the yellows, on one side, the colors are going to be more green. They will gradually, each pencil, be turning more green colored and on the other side they are going to be gradually turning more orange. Now I'm going to talk more about this in just a little bit but having your colors organized in this way leads you up to a really really optimal position to end up choosing the right color for your drawings. And let me know down in the comments guys if there are any specific colors you feel are the hardest to choose the right color from. Also give this video a like if you're enjoying it. The best way to practice choosing the right colors is by color mixing and practicing on a sheet of the actual drawing paper that you are going to be using. Now, you wanna do this for each one of your drawings and preferably doing this before you actually begin doing any coloring on your drawing whatsoever. This way you are testing all of the potential color mixing options before you apply them to your drawing and make any mistakes. That doesn't mean you aren't going to make any mistakes at all, but it does mean you are going to really drastically reduce the mistakes you end up making with colors. Now, the reason why it's important to be using the same drawing paper that you are going to be using for your drawing is so that you can get the same layering techniques or have the same amount of layers be possible so that way you know if that's going to work or not because sometimes when you're practicing mixing colors you end up maxing out on the amount of layers you can apply and that's clearly not going to work if you're maxed out and it's not already the right color because you have to add more to it and you can't. Do a practice drawing on a sheet of scratch paper so that you can get all of the ideas out on what's going to work and see if you can get good results on that scratch paper before you apply anything that you've learned about that to your actual drawing. So you have that piece of scratch paper, go ahead and just grab the colors that you think you are going to use and put a big swatch or a square or whatever on that scratch paper, get your first color down, 
and then try to decide, okay, what else does this need? Then grab the other colors and try mixing those and see if it works. If it doesn't, then try to just reevaluate what you did. You have the colors that you used. You can go ahead and just do another square and practice with more of different colors to see what kind of results you're going to get. And you wanna keep doing this until you end up with the right results. There are of course going to be some instances where blending things out is going to be better for you to get a much better representation of exactly how that color is going to behave or getting it to smooth out so that you can look at it better. And in this case, if you're not familiar with my style of drawing and how I blend my colored pencils, I use solvent or odorless mineral spirits to blend my colored pencils. So sometimes color mixing can take a little bit of time because you have to blend it with solvent or odorless mineral spirits and that needs at least 10 to 15 minutes to dry. But in the meantime, while you're waiting for one of your color swatch tests to dry up, you can try practicing some of the other colors on the same sheet of scratch paper. And then just come back to the original one you are working on when it's dry and continuing to try and get it to be exactly what you need. All right, so now I'm gonna talk about the really important deciding factor that I've mentioned a couple of times in this video at this point. Asking yourself this one question is going to give you the answer that you need in deciding the right color. Now, it's not going to mean that you're going to choose the exact right color every single time without fail. It just means that you are going to be going in a good path in ending up with the right color a lot faster. So like what I mentioned before, is having your colored pencils organized in a rainbow-like pattern being really important. That is so that you can do this step very easily. So when we move on to yellows and you're trying to choose the right yellow for your drawing, you need to ask that question. Do I want a blue yellow or do I want a red yellow? And the same thing goes with blues. So you have blues that have yellow and you have blues that have red. Blues that have yellow are going to be teal. Blues that have red are going to be more purple. And really for this step to be the best of help to you is to make sure that you have your colored pencils organized as they slowly shift into each second color group. Don't organize them from lightest to darkest. They need to be just from the color changes. So now as a really good example for you to refer from, from why this really works in helping you narrow down to the right color choice. And I'm going to use yellows as an example again, just because there are a lot of options of those. So say for example, on this bald eagle that I am actually working on and trying to choose colors for. I choose one color that I think is going to work or is going to be part of the colors that I need for the beak. I find out it doesn't work. So then I have the idea in mind, okay, what does it need? Does it need more red or does it need more blue? Beaks aren't green, so really it needs to be more on the red spectrum. So my next choice would be to think, okay, maybe I should choose the next option that is just slightly darker or more red. Which one do I need? Is the color I chose too light? Is it also not the right shade of red? red with it. Sometimes both of those are going to be what's happening or going on with the color that you previously chose. So you need to keep that in mind of both of those options. Do I need to go darker or do I need to go with more of a shift in color? And then you ask yourself how much darker? So does it need to be one shade or does it need to be two shades? And because you have your colors organized in this pattern of shifting from one color slowly to the next, it's going to be so much easier for you to spot exactly which you need to choose. Now this doesn't mean you are going to end up with that specific chosen one working out to be the right result. Sometimes it does take a multiple of color mixing different colors to end up with the right result but it is going to give you the workflow pattern to get you into choosing the right colors for your drawings. And for those of you who are looking to have a helpful tool in choosing colors, or at least helping you kind of pick out the right colors to kind of choose out of for a drawing that you are going to be doing, or those of you who are colorblind, you can use a program called Photoshop or GIMP. GIMP is free if you do not have a paid version of Photoshop, but these programs have what is called an eyedropper tool, which allows you to go over a reference photo and select out individual colors for areas 
photos of your drawings and choose those colors that are there. Then all you have to do is try and match up colored pencils from the sets you have with your eyeballs to your screen. And I talk way more about how to do this in this video here. If you are looking for more hands-on learning about color mixing, color choices, sketching, and complicated drawing techniques of fur and more, sign up for my real-time drawing lessons by clicking the link on the screen. I take you through every step of the way through my color choice and mixing for my tutorial drawings where you guys can learn these skills to leveling up your drawings.